Creator come from thy bright heavenly throne. Come take possession of our hearts and make them all thine own. Thou who art called the paraclete, best gift of God above, the living spring, the living fire, sweet unction and true love. Thou who art sevenfold in thy grace, finger of God's right hand, his promise teaching little ones to speak and understand. O oh, guide our minds with thy blessed light, with love our hearts inflame, and with thy strength which ne'er decays, confirm our mortal strength. The living God, my shepherd is, I know no care or need. He leads me where to waters flow along the verdant sea. It is a vast and complex subject, impossible to compress within a 10 minute video. However, the first thing I want to make quite clear is that it is only significantly true at a specific level of description. We are greatly indebted to modern science for the concept of levels of description amply explained in the books of Dr. Paul Davies. This has changed our epistemology across the board. At a specific level of description, reincarnation is true. Immortality of the soul is not something we have to achieve. We already have it. The soul by its very nature is an indestructible piece of God, a small spark from that infinite fire. It had no beginning, and it can never end. You are your soul. You had no beginning, and you can never end. You are that which is, as well as that which is not, as well as the space between. The only difference between you and God is that you are finite, while the one God is infinite. You are finite almost continuously, but there are moments in life when you're so wrapped up in infinite that there seems to be no real difference between you and God, none at all. Such experiences are beyond all words. Then you realize the oneness. That is the very highest level of description. At that level you are everybody, and everyone is you. So you are incarnated in everybody at once. Instead of one at a time, in what we think of as time, which is an illusion. At a lower level of description, as you experience life in relativity, you seem to reincarnate in successive personalities, sometimes male, sometimes female, sometimes rich, sometimes poor, sometimes black, sometimes white, and so on. This level of description is very real and is not untrue though it might be considered as an incomplete view of the truth. In my opinion, it is not only truth, but to a certain extent, to a certain extent, but necessary for the fulfillment of divine justice. God is just. His justice cannot be avoided or evaded. Justice does not mean the same as punishment or the same as reward but it can include either or both. Justice means getting what you are entitled to. Remember what Genesis said about Abraham? He was a man of faith, and it was attributed to him unto justice. 
That is because faith in God is a matter of justice. When you have faith in God, you are giving God what he is entitled to give. At least that is my belief. Judaism recognizes Yahweh as the Lord of history, and all history is the history of the redemption of the whole world. This is the tradition I follow. It is the core message both of the Old Testament and of the teachings of Jesus. Yahweh recognized all religions. This is proved by many texts, but in particular by Isaiah chapters 43 to 45. His goal has little to do with belief systems and much to do with righteousness. The core component of righteousness is kindness and compassion. In order to ensure that righteousness would prevail in his creation, God instituted the law of karma. This law ensures that all effects are experienced by the one who causes them. In other words, you get back what you dish out to others. This is where the law of rebirth comes into picture. It is impossible to get a complete balance of your karmic account in one short incarnation of 70 years. Karmic balance is achieved only over a period of not less than about 10,000 years involving many incarnations. Complete and perfect divine justice is achieved through the action of the law of rebirth coordinated with the law of karma. God has appointed great entities called the Lords of Karma to monitor the implementation of these laws. They are parts of himself, just as we are. <coughs> One of the reasons I believe in the Lord Maitre is that his teachings include exactly the same core concepts I have found in the Bible and in other sacred literatures. In the early churches, the early Christian churches, Belief in reincarnation was common. It is found in the writings of many of the fathers of the early church, including those of Origen in the 2nd century and St. Augustine of Hippo in the 4th century. Origen and Augustine were the two giants among the early church fathers. Unfortunately, Christianity itself and its sacred literature became a political football from about 300 AD. Constantine and his mentor, Bishop Osius, did not promote belief in reincarnation, and much later the Empress Theodora bitterly opposed it. Such was her influence over Emperor Justinian that even after she died, he completed the condemnation of Origen at the Council of Constantinople in 553 AD. Since then, the belief in reincarnation has been systematically extirpated from the Christian churches of East and West alike. So what did God do about it? I'll tell you what I think he did about it. He sent down the prophet Muhammad to start Islam. That's what God did about it. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it, your eminence. I hope I'm not giving anyone a heart attack. Just an opinion.